Join us. He drives a number 88 Dot Mountain Dew National Guard Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. He joined with his crew chief, Steve Latart. Dale, good to have you back. Good to have you here at Martinsville. Talk about uh, uh, maybe just how things have been going since we last visited with you, I guess, in uh, Charlotte a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it's been, uh, you know, just a lot of time off, a lot of time on my hands, but uh, uh, just exercising and, uh, you know, doing what the doctors told me to do and uh, feeling better every day and just uh, going through the process. It's, you know, you just got to be patient and, you know, let things happen. And uh, I've learned a ton, uh, you know, just about uh, what I've went through. I um, feel like I'm a lot smarter, uh, you know, a lot more prepared and, and understand the situation a lot better now than than uh, beforehand. So that's really good, and it's been a good experience. Um, you know, it's something I'd rather not have went through, but, uh, you know, I've learned a lot from it. It's been good for me, and I'm just excited to be back, uh, you know, to work and get back in the car and get back to, you know, normal and – Get, a, get get back to the night, the life that I you know that I'm used to. Steve Latart uh, has joined uh, Dale Crew Chief, and I know uh, Dale ran some laps the other day over at, uh, at Gresham, and uh, heard uh, heard you were real pleased with how how that turned out, Steve. Uh, yeah, you know, part of the uh, the kind of secrets of events that the doc laid out was you know the Dale and him had things they had to work through, but then from a team sp standpoint, they expect us to take a car to the racetrack and just run some laps, and we went down to Gresham. It's a nice little short track that we were able to run. I think we ran like around 125 laps, and I thought the laps were great. The times were great. His feedback was as good as it always is. So uh, uh, that was really encouraging and, and excited to have him back here at Martinsville. Very good. We're going to try to get as many questions as we can, so we're going to ask you to limit yourself to one question, not a four- or five-part question, okay? So we'll start here with Claire B. Lang. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Dale, what sort of support did you get from other drivers, from your fans during the time? It had to be really difficult to get out of the car. What kind of feedback did you get from the fans and from fellow drivers? Well, I really was kind of shut off from everything, but I got some text messages from people that, uh, you know, it was, it was nice to uh, know people were thinking about you. And, um, you know, most of, most of the guys that I, you know, got contacted uh, by were just wishing that, you know, I was at the racetrack wishing I was racing with them and just didn't seem normal to to not be racing with me and it, and I, I felt the same way. It felt it wasn't normal for me to be sitting at home. But, uh, you know, I uh, you know, I had great support from from the fans and, and my family and, and everybody. Let's go to uh, David Newton, Bob Pockers, Jim Utter. Go ahead, David. David Newton, ESPN.com. Dale, a lot of speculation out there whether you should have come back, maybe taken the rest of the year off. Did you ever even consider uh, sitting out the rest of the year? Um, you know, you, I left the table really kind of options all open. I, I just wanted to, you know, uh, just like the decision to get out of the car in the first place, I wanted the doctors to make that decision instead of me. So uh, if I uh, could race, I wanted to be at the racetrack. It's what I – love to do and, and if the doctors felt I was healthy enough to do that I wanted to be doing it so uh, you know I just uh, I've really kind of left all that up to them throughout the whole process and I've been really honest and upfront about how I felt every day and 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 when we go through uh, you know exercises how those are um, affecting me uh, and so I've been pretty honest and and so far they've been real pleased with what they've seen and feel like I can get back in the car so that's what I want to do. I, I, you know, I feel, I felt like I could race at uh, Kansas for sure, and and probably ran at uh, Charlotte with no problem. And I feel foolish, you know, I feel kind of foolish sitting at home feeling okay and not being in the car. I feel feels really unnatural. So, uh, you know, if I feel I feel I feel good, and the doctors say it's okay, I want to be in the car. Bob Pockris, Jim Utter, Mike Embry. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, Bob Pockris, Sporting News. What have the last two and a half weeks been like for you? I mean, have you been scared? Have you been frustrated? Or do you just, I mean, it happened and you just kind of go with the flow? Yeah, just uh, probably more going with the flow. There's been times when, you know, it's frustrating because you, uh, you know, you want uh, you want your brain to, you know, you want your brain to clear up and the fog fogginess to go away and all the symptoms to go away. Um and 
you know, every every concussion is different. They're kind of like snowflakes, and uh, everyone's different, and everybody, every, you react differently to each one. Um, and uh, so, like I said, I've learned a whole lot about it, and I feel uh, I feel good knowing what I know now about it and knowing what I've learned about it. But, um, you know, it's just been really frustrating at times. Uh, Regan did a really good job for the team. I told him that, you know, I was worried about the momentum we had built as a team, and he maintained that. I feel like that it's you know we didn't miss a beat, and I can get back in the car as if nothing's really even changed. So all that couldn't have went better, um, and it was it was kind of hard. It was really hard to see that you know your car out there running around turning laps without you in it. Um, um, so that was that was difficult. But uh, you know I just know that we had a really good test up until the the tire blew at Kansas and I was really um, you know expecting to go up there and run really well so it was frustrating sitting at home and knowing how good a car we, we had and not being able to enjoy that with the team but you know it's just uh, you just kind of got to be patient and and just uh, you know stay in regular contact with the doctors I, the, once I got to know the guys in Pittsburgh I was on the phone with with uh, Mickey you know twice a day just talking you know about everything I was doing and everything I was feeling so because I just wanted to do, do it right I didn't want to take any chances and I wanted to get back in the car as soon as I could but I wanted to to, to make sure it was it was not too quick Jim Mutter Mike Embry Shannon Spake go ahead Jim Jim Mutter Charlotte Observer Dale uh, kind of as a follow to Bob's question with all that you've uh, learned in the last several weeks from doctors maybe reading on your own your approach going forward Will that change as when it comes to issues like this, as far as how you uh, look at look at another incident in the future, or what you may or may not do differently? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it uh, it changed the way I feel about it. Uh, to where if I you know if I know that I've uh, you know if I know I've suffered another concussion, or if I have symptoms after an accident, I'm I'm definitely going to be a lot more responsible about it. You know, and and you know, I can understand. Uh, you know, people's uh, people's opinions that they would try to you know push through it or they would ignore it uh, to stay in the car, and because I did the same thing in the past. But uh, you know, when you know some concussions are kind of light, and the symptoms are real light, and that you know if you don't have another incident, you know there's you know, you feel like you can get through it, but the, the, you know, some concussions are really bad and I don't care how tough you think you are when you're, when your mind's not working the way it's supposed to, it scares the shit out of you. And you're going to, you're going to, you know, you're not going to think about race cars. You're not going to think about trophies. You're not going to think about your job. You're going to be thinking about how, what, do, what do I got to do to get my brain working the way it was before? You know, that's going to, jump right to the top of the priority list i promise you and uh you know so i i definitely take it more seriously now after everything i've learned and i'm glad i did what i did um and uh you know i would i know that uh you know it's got you know i, I hate uh, i hate the attention that it got and hate kind of being uh in front of you guys here talking about it but uh you know, it's, I, I'm glad what I did, and I'm, I'm glad I did what I did, and I'm glad that, uh, you know, I took the time off and made the, change, the choices that I made, and they were hard to make, but uh, I had to do it. I had to do it. I didn't have a choice, and I knew that something wasn't right, and I was, um, you can't layer concussions. It's really dangerous doing that, and it's, uh, you know, you read about it in the papers, and I was going through it. I was living it, so I had to, you know, I had to make a choice, and I feel like I made the right one. Let's go with uh, Mike Embry, Shannon Spake, and then Randy. Go ahead, Mike. MikeEmbrySpeak.com. Dale, how do you approach this weekend? Do you feel like you can get in the car here in a few minutes and be the old Dale, be 100%? Or do you kind of have to ease into the first part uh, to kind of get your balance again? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I've been out of the car for a year. I don't, you know, it doesn't feel like a couple weeks. So, But I think we can go right to it, you know. We, uh, I feel good at the test, and uh, you know, 
I like this racetrack, and I feel like we can run good here, and and I want, uh, you know, I want to do a good job over the next four weeks. I want to run hard, and, you know, I want us to go in to every weekend trying to do what we've been doing all year long. Shannon, Randy, and then Nate. Shannon Spake, ESPN. Dale, you mentioned being shut off from everything. And just wondering if you could talk about the last two weeks, what you were limited to, you know, as far as television, as far as contact with the team. You know, what, what did you do during the last two weeks? Well, the first um, 48 hours, they told me not to do anything, so I just kind of didn't do anything. Uh, I guess, you know, I slept a lot. But, uh, you know, the no TV, just basically just sit, standing and walking around the house doing nothing. So, uh it was really weird, but uh, so I, I went uh, back to the doctor and I told him that I couldn't do that <laughs> anymore, that I needed to do, watch TV or play video games or something. I need some kind of entertainment. And, uh, you know, I got a lot, I went to Pittsburgh and, and uh, they put me on a physical and mental exercise program that I did every day. And uh, that really made the biggest difference. Um, to, it was really crazy because I went to Pittsburgh a mess you know I was just uh, really mentally uh, in, in a, a mess and uh, the uh, the doctors up there we talked for the whole day and went through these exercises and did a lot of stuff and and in 12 hours I was I felt uh, really good I felt completely different I couldn't believe it but uh, so um, you know it's been a it's you know it's been pretty normal the last 15 days or so uh have felt a lot better and and i'm you know everything about my life is back to normal except for the driving part i just haven't been able to do my job and um so i'm glad to be you know doing this let's go randy nate and then monty go ahead Okay, Dale, you know Brad Keselowski. You still remember him. I'm not going to talk about your head. Let's talk about him. You know, he, he drove for you. How's he going to hold up in this situation? A lot of people are saying, oh, the, the, this this kid, first time in this situation, he's going to crack. What's the pressure going to do? You know him. Yeah, I don't think he's going to crack. I think he's going to be hard to beat. Um, I think he'll be a tough competitor all the way through. Brad's been waiting on this opportunity all his life, uh, so I don't I don't expect him to – to crack under the pressure. I think I think it'll be tough. Let's go Nate, Monty, and then Hank Kurtz. Go ahead, Nate. Front row, please. That's all right. A lot of folks here. Appreciate you coming, man. <laughs> Nate Ryan, USA Today. Uh, Dale, you said you, you went to Pittsburgh feeling like a mess, and I know that the team release said you, you hadn't had any headache symptoms for like a couple of weeks. but. Yeah. Were there moments here where, like, up until you got in the car at Gresham and up until you actually got cleared Tuesday, were there moments you thought, like, maybe I'm not going to make it back, maybe this isn't going to work out? Or Yeah, um, you know, the part of the, the, the two concussions, it's – I'm trying not to get long-winded, but the two concussions were completely different as far as, the you know, where my brain was injured. And uh, <laughs> as far as I can understand, you know, what the doctors have told me, the uh, the first one at Kansas was your typical concussion where you know it was uh, you know the frontal lobe and the headaches and this you know the fogginess that you typically feel and the the one that I had at Talladega was uh, vestibular is what they call it and it's more in the the back or the base of the brain where the brain and the uh, your spine sort of connect so uh, it hit. It banged around a lot of. It sort of mixed up a lot of anxiety and and emotional stuff, and so the the symptoms were more like anxiety driven. And if I would get into uh, you know sort of a busy situation, you know, I just get a lot of anxiety. I was already that way, anyways. I'm, I've never really been much on you know being around crowds and a lot of people, but uh, so the two concussions were completely different and. Uh, you know, so I was dealing with different symptoms, and you know, so I'd have to. I'd, when I went up there to Pittsburgh, I was just really frustrated. When I say I was a mess, I was just really frustrated and having a lot of anxiety about, man, how long is this going to last? Is this ever going to be right again? Is you know, I had no answers, didn't know anything, and uh, 
these guys up there are the professionals and and I just asked them everything I wanted to know and then we went through all these drills and exercises and they ran me ragged and uh it was a it was a fun day and by the end of the day I felt like I understood what I was dealing with understood what the process was and I felt a whole lot better I felt um you know and and when I would you know if I ever got any doubts I'd just call Mickey up and we'd talk about it for an hour and uh, really, that was the best therapy for me. Was just kind of understanding what was going on, and but the uh, the regular, you know, the typical symptoms of being foggy and having headaches, uh, those were really prevalent in the first concussion. Not so much in this one. Let's go, Monty. Uh, raise your hand, Monty. You got the mic, well, Monty. I'm, o- I'm over here behind the Black Forest. Uh, Monty Dutton, Gaston is it? Uh, Dale, you said that you had learned a lot about it and thought a lot about it. I guess many people have in the last two weeks. And I was just wondering about the fact that, you know, in racing you can take some some fearsome hits. But when you compare it to, say, football or hockey, a person might take five fearsome hits in one game. And so I just wondered what maybe you had learned or if you thought about that and the fact that you do have recovery time, does that make it a little bit less trouble you might get in in this sport than in others? Yeah, I guess you could say that. Um, I was surprised that I don't have any, uh, you know, statistical facts or anything, but I was surprised to hear how much more often the guys in the NFL have, you know, have issues than we do. And, you know, I I was – we were talking about – how many concussions I thought I'd had in a year, and it was it was some somewhere between four, and, or how many I'd had in my career, and it was some between somewhere between four and six. And I, they were saying that some of these guys, most of the guys in the NFL, have that many a season. So um, I just can't imagine, and it you know that'd be a that'd be a scary situation to be in uh, to have to uh, you know just you know the symptoms alone are frustrating and. You know, trying to just go through your everyday life with with that kind of, you know, it's like uh, I would compare it to like a computer that has too many processes running in the background. It slows it down, and it just doesn't work as, work as fast. And programs don't start up as quick, and things sort of hang up in the middle. But uh, you know, that's kind of what it's like. But um, you know, it, it, I do. Uh, you know, and, and the way that uh, you know the G forces are way different for the different sports, and everything sort of happens differently in the in the event itself. As far as a race car versus a guy having a helmet to helmet hit, the event itself is quite different. In the way the brain handles the trauma is different. But uh, yeah, I feel like that um, our sport um, we do have uh, you know I do have an opportunity to get back in the car probably soon sooner than you would on the football field because. On the football field, you're going to go out there and you're going to run, run into somebody head on, first opportunity you get. So, you better make sure you got your melon in good shape if you're going to do that. Let's go with Hank Kurtz. Hank in the corner, back in the corner. Dale Hank Kurtz with AP. With all you've learned and you know the confusion and the anxiety and all that stuff and just kind of the whole ball of wax of fear and whatever, does it make you feel at all like? your career could be fleeting at this point, you know, with layering and do do you worry that one more bad one and you'd you'd have to stop? Um, you know, I guess uh I don't really think about that too much. Um the one thing that I can tell you is that uh that I'd you know, definitely I'm gonna be honest with myself and honest with uh you know, the doctors, uh you know, and I'm gonna do whatever they tell me to do. Um, uh, you know, I don't want to I want to be able to, you know, live a, a full life and, you know, not have any issues down the road. And uh, but I feel pretty fortunate to have, you know, recovered from this con- concussion rather quickly and uh, feel lucky that I made the choices that I did to give myself that opportunity. Uh, I think that had I tried to push through this second one, I would really put myself in a lot of danger. So, um, you know. I think we can, uh, you know, just hope that I don't, you know, have any more big hits for a while and, you know, race another, you know, five, ten years and have some fun. 
Okay, we can take two more questions so we can let Dale do what he came here for, and that's getting a race car. But we've got Jeff Gluck and then Steve Richards, and then we'll need to go. Go ahead, Jeff. Jeff Gluck from SPNation.com. Um, what was the single thing you missed most about being in the car, like the thing that you found yourself really craving about when, you, when you're watching on TV and the, the emotion that, that you felt? What, what was it about it that you missed? Um the team just uh, working with the team working with the guys we've got a pretty good relationship and i really enjoy working with them and being at the track and just going through practice you know making a change and it working and and you know everybody you know getting excited about that you know just that small improvement that we made um you know it, it's it's hard to put your finger on one you know one detail but the when you're, you know, when you're sitting there watching the race go on, you know, you just, I miss, you know, you know, hearing Steve and TJ's voice and, you know, just being in the car and going through the process, you know, being out there and competing, watching all my peers compete uh, and just wishing I was in the mix, you know, being out there doing it. But uh, just being around the guys, all, you know, every one of my guys, we've gotten a great relationship built over the last couple of years and, so it's and it's fun to race with them. It's fun to go to work with them. Go ahead, Steve. Final question. Steve Richards with PRN. I was wondering, growing up, did you see your dad having the same symptoms as you had after he took some hard hits? And were, you might have thought, you know, you were concerned for him, or did you, you thought maybe he should, you know, settle down just a little bit or have. No, um, it's really hard to tell when somebody has a concussion if, unless they speak up and say something. So. Uh, concussions are pretty easy to hide, so I'd, I'd never, I'd never known anyone that had one, uh, or been around anybody that had had a concussion, and wasn't, you know, wasn't being honest about it. Dale, thanks a lot for coming in. Good to have you back, Steve. Thanks you for coming that. in as well. Good luck this weekend. I guess I'm, um, I am going to wear a new helmet this week, and I know that that's going to draw a lot of attention it might it might not but uh i had been talking it's a stilo helmet and i'd worn one before i didn't uh I, li I liked the helmet back then a couple years ago when i when i decided to wear it back then but there was a particular part about the helmet that i didn't like that they weren't uh they weren't able to make an adjustment for at the time so i went away from the helmet well i'm going back to it and it, this was all uh sort of in the process prior to all this concussion stuff so i don't want anybody to really put two and two together uh thinking that i'm changing away from my impact helmets because of that certain uh because of the concussions uh, that's not the case at all um i've just been wanting to try the stilo helmet since they made some modifications to it and uh it's de it's definitely not a final decision i'm just you know checking it out because i kind of i liked it before it's a nice helmet but I've enjoyed my impacts too, but um, we're gonna, I'm going to try this one out and see how it works. So I just didn't want uh, – I've enjoyed working with impacts, and I do like their helmets, and I just didn't want them to get uh, – anybody get the wrong idea there. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you.